An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Unless you look like an apple, then it's a big problem. The apple-shaped body is indicative of high degrees of visceral fat in both men and women, and we're gonna break it all down. Let's open with a study published in the journal Metabolism just to get this out there. Okay, visceral fat within this study was correlated with poor glucose tolerance, meaning unable to really process glucose, ultimately higher cholesterol, ultimately higher levels of triglycerides. The list goes on and on. Okay, we know that visceral fat is not good, but let's talk about it from a body composition side of things for just a second. Okay, the apple-shaped body indicates, okay, yes, you're storing fat in the abdomen, and whether it is the unsightly body fat that's on the outside or on the inside, it's still not good. But if you do have a larger waist, yes, it is generally more associated with visceral fat. And say whatever you want about BMI and all that stuff that is just like not exactly the best markers of health to really look at, but the waist to hip ratio is pretty solid. Okay, generally if someone has a poor waist to hip ratio, it's pretty largely correlated with poor health in a lot of different categories, but I digress. Let's move on to talking about how this works specifically in men and women with a ketogenic diet and insulin resistance. Hey, after this video, check out my friends over at Keto Crisp. Talk about a super cool story, okay? I wanna mention these guys because they are now going to be in Costco's, at least here on the West Coast, but also you can get them online. Now, Keto Crisp is, yes, another keto bar, but they are amazing, amazing tasting. But the thing I love most about them is the founder Adam's story. So Adam has cerebral palsy, okay? and. You know, normally with cerebral palsy, people just barely even function. But Adam, utilizing the ketogenic diet, has allowed himself to not only lose weight, but allowed himself to really function, not just as a person with cerebral palsy, but also as someone that is running a thriving business. So his story is just epic, and I wanna do whatever I can to support awesome brands with awesome messages that are doing amazing things with really good tasting products. So I want you to check them out down below in the description, give them some support, show them some love, and thank you to Keto Chris for the support on this channel, and just the mutually beneficial official relationship that we have. You guys are awesome. So there's a link down below in the description for you to try them out or you can check them out in Costco's. So with visceral fat, there is a relationship with insulin resistance, but it's a large kind of a chicken or the egg kind of thing, which came first. It's largely bi-directional, right? So if we have just this impairment of glucose tolerance or this increase in insulin resistance, there's a good chance that we're going to increase our visceral fat. If we have an increase in visceral fat, there's also a good chance we're gonna affect our insulin resistance. But let's go ahead and look at some research here first before we dive into the ketogenic diet piece for men and women. So this first study was published in Lipids in Health and Disease, okay? And it indicated that when you have high levels of visceral fat, you potentially secrete something called RBP4, retinol binding protein four, okay? Now, RBP4 isn't just seen in people with high levels of visceral fat it's also seen in people that have type 2 diabetes. Now, correlation does not equal causation. Now, we can see an increase in RBP4 in both groups, but it kind of makes sense when you put it all together. You see, if you look at another study published in the journal Diabetes Care, you see that RBP4 stimulates what's called hepatic gluconeogenesis. Now, this means that it's driving the liver to continually produce glucose even when it doesn't need it. Therefore, elevating glucose and keeping it high for a long period of time. Definitely not something we want. But even more so, RBP4 binds to an insulin receptor, blocking insulin from being received. Okay, so here we can kind of see that visceral fat leads to insulin resistance, but insulin resistance can lead to visceral fat accumulation too, just because you're not utilizing the energy, you're ultimately storing it in the belly, which is not good. So let's break down what this might look like for women, because it's slightly different for men and women. I'll talk about men in just a second. There is a strong estrogen link with visceral fat in women. There's a study that was published in the journal Fertility and Sterility, and it really demonstrated that there's a strong correlation between estrogen and central abdominal fat accumulation in women. See, you notice that when estrogen levels are relatively high in a woman, they store fat in their hips and in their legs. But after menopause, when estrogen levels plummet, we see women start to store a lot more fat in their abdomen because estrogen levels are a little bit lower. We also see this in what is called hypoestrogenemia, when women are not producing a lot of estrogen. Okay, so we know that if estrogen levels are lower, they might store more visceral fat. And by the way, women don't usually store as much visceral fat as men but it starts to happen a lot more after menopause or if estrogen levels are plummeted. Well, where does the ketogenic diet come in? I'll get to that in just a second. 
First, I have to connect the dots between estrogen and insulin in order for the ketogenic conversation to make sense. So there's a study that was published in Pathology and Oncology Research. Okay, and it found that estrogen played a very big role with insulin signaling. When estrogen levels were lower, insulin signaling ultimately was lower as well. So if you look at hyperinsulinemia, like when women have higher levels of insulin because, well, they're just consuming a lot of carbohydrates and whatnot, well, you find that, okay, there's a correlation or a connection between higher levels of androgen production and lower levels of estrogen, which can definitely indicate that as insulin resistance gets worse, it's a lot easier to store fat as, well, visceral fat. Well, insert ketogenic diet. So the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published a study when they looked at women that were doing a ketogenic diet, they found that their, of course, their fasting insulin levels improved, their blood glucose stabilized, their HbA1c improved. Okay, all these markers that are associated with insulin resistance improved. And those that were on any kind of type two diabetes medication ended up reducing dramatically the amount of medication they had to take. So we know there's a big correlation between the ketogenic diet and improving insulin sensitivity or improving that insulin resistance issue that we deal with so much as a society. Now you could hypothesize with this that the ketogenic diet is going to improve estrogen levels. And if you look at some of the PCOS studies and you look at some of that, you definitely can see in women it's going to improve estrogen levels via some different mechanisms, probably by improving insulin resistance. But let's take a look at a study that actually looked at people and over the course of time, how much fat they actually lost. So the Frontiers in Physiology published a study that took a look at 24 women and it put them on a ketogenic diet. Okay, now over the course of four weeks, they lost about 4.8 pounds or so. So a good amount of fat that was lost, good amount of weight that was lost. But what was interesting is they had a four centimeter reduction in their overall waist size. Now it doesn't sound like much, but over the course of four weeks, in a direct association there, that's quite a dramatic drop, which is the closest indicator that we can see without a study that's looking at a DEXA scan that they were probably losing some visceral fat. But we know the correlation between insulin resistance and visceral fat. So in this case, we can hypothesize that a ketogenic diet is gonna improve that insulin resistance or improve the insulin sensitivity and reduce some of that insulin resistance to the point where maybe they won't establish as much visceral fat, especially after menopause. But now let's take a look at men because it's slightly different. It's less about how much estrogen a man has and it's more about how little testosterone a man has. So if you look at a study that was published in the journal Metabolism, Clinical and Experimental, it paints a pretty clear picture that lower levels of testosterone are generally associated with higher levels of visceral fat. Again, you know, full disclaimer, correlation does not always equal causation, but it paints a pretty open picture for us. Also, a lot of studies demonstrate that when you administer testosterone exogenously, you have a decrease in overall visceral fat, and usually an improvement in insulin resistance and an improvement in some of these other markers as well. Well, what does this have to do with the ketogenic diet? Well, if you look at a study that was published in the journal Endocrine, it took a look at men that went on a very low calorie ketogenic diet. Now, they improved their testosterone levels from 264 nanograms per deciliter all the way up to 371 nanograms per deciliter. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the ketogenic diet itself magically improved their testosterone levels, but what it does indicate is that the ketogenic diet is probably helping them reduce fat quickly enough that a lot of their testosterone is not getting what is called aromatized because our fat cells leak out this enzyme called aromatase. This aromatase enzyme grabs testosterone and converts it into estrogen. So therefore, we have higher levels of estrogen, but more importantly in this case, we have lower levels of testosterone. These lower levels of testosterone affect our insulin resistance and they affect our accumulation of visceral fat. But what we have to remember that's most important is that visceral fat is much more sensitive to testosterone than just regular subcutaneous fat. So although it could be making an impact on our subcutaneous fat, lower levels of testosterone are going to impact our visceral fat significantly more. So no matter which way you go about it, if the ketogenic diet is reducing some of the fat that is aromatizing the testosterone, you are left with a net positive impact of improved insulin sensitivity and less visceral fat, okay? Because less testosterone usually means more visceral fat. More available testosterone, whether it's there for building muscle or not, is largely associated with less visceral fat. So when you look at kind of the hormonal pieces here, that's how the ketogenic diet can at least kind of sway the insulin resistance piece to help improve our overall visceral fat levels. Now you also look at just general indicators of why people establish more visceral fat as they get older. Well, it probably once again, well at least I can hypothesize, comes from just the accumulation of insulin resistance over time. Okay, you look at the onset 
of diabetes, and you see that it occurs as we get older. Okay, the large cohort studies look at, okay, they say, wait a minute, most people are older when they start establishing type 2 diabetes, although that's getting younger now. But that tells us that's more exposure to glucose, more exposure with this chronic, like high level of glucose, high HbA1c, that is affecting all kinds of things. And you could probably find a lot of data that supports that as that insulin resistance increases, so does the onset of more visceral fat accumulation as we get older. So controlling the whole insulin resistance piece in both men and women works upon potentially different avenues, but is very powerful overall at the, I don't know, the prospect of mitigating it. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.